Good afternoon. Welcome to our worship service for Lorraine Avenue Church. Please join me in reading the call to worship that's printed in your bulletin. I will read the one and we will read the all together. Come, hear, hear this together. We have a story to remember. Come, listen, listen to these words about a God of love. We have a story to remember. Come, learn. Learn about a God on the side of the oppressed. Learn of Zipporah, bizarre hero against death. We have a story to remember. Come, worship. Worship, serve, and delight in our God. We have a story to remember. Please stand if you are able for the opening hymn. It's in the Voices Together hymnal, number 25, Brethren, We Have Met to Worship. Thank you. be seated. It's now time for the children with Kathy Everingham. Pass the offering plate and if we are not doing that. There's still the opportunity to mail in your checks to the church or bring them with you to put in the box at the back, back of the sanctuary. Um, or go to our website and use the link there to give your gifts. So let us pray as a sign of our thanksgiving for everything that God has given to us. God of extravagant mercy, with hands outstretched, you have poured out wonder and pleasure and delight, goodness and beauty and bounty. So take these offerings, we pray, as our protest against all that is evil and ugly and impoverished, trivial and wretched and tyrannical, 
in our world and in ourselves, that we too may be poured out for the world. Amen. The next hymn is in Voices Together, number 748, Take, O Take Me As I Am. Please stand. Our scripture reading is from Exodus 4, verses 18 through 31. Moses went back to his father-in-law Jethro and said to him, Please, please let me go back to Egypt, to my kindred, to see whether they are still living. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. The Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all those who were seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, put them on a donkey, and went back to the land of Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand. And the Lord said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders that I have put in your power. But I will harden his heart, so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. I said to you, Let my son go, that he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go. Now I will kill your firstborn son. On the way, at a place where they spent the night, the Lord met him and tried to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched Moses' seat with it and said, Truly you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So the Lord let Moses alone. It was then, she said, A bridegroom of blood by circumcision. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went, and he met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him, and all the signs with which he had charged him. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the Israelites. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and performed the signs in the sight of the people. The people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had given heed to the Israelites and that he had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. Hello, everyone. We are continuing our Hidden Gems of the Bible series, and as you just heard, today's story is a wild ride. <laughs> it's actually very striking when we read it this way, how much normal stuff is around the encounter that I'm gonna focus on today. It's just like very like all the stuff we know about Exodus. God is sending Moses back to Egypt to bring the Israelites out of Egypt, and then we get that story gets picked right back up after this weird little vignette with Sephora. It's a story that popular retellings of Exodus, like the Prince of Egypt, the Ten Commandments, they tend to leave these out, even though something like the Ten Commandments is like, I looked it up this week, it's called an epic story, like it's an epic movie because it is so long. So, but the, even they're like, we're not touching this very strange story. And 
What that reminds me today is that encounters with God are strange. So let's review how did we get to this point in Exodus. Moses was raised in Egypt under the care of Pharaoh's daughter, but he was born to a Hebrew woman and saved by the quick thinking of his sister Miriam from the decree to kill all the Hebrew boys. We heard a bit about that last week from Scott's sermon. Now when grown, Moses had to flee Egypt because in his anger he killed an Egyptian. Moses runs to Midian, home of the priest Jethro, and eventually marries Sipporah, one of Jethro's daughters. Now after Moses accepts the command from God to go and lead the Israelites out of Egypt, he gathers up his family and heads toward his old home. And on the way, this happens. Encounters with God are strange. There is an attack from the Lord. Zipporah jumps into action, cuts off her son's foreskin, and touches it to the skin of her son's body? Moses' body? A fun fact here, too, is that feet is usually a euphemism for something else. So do that what do with that what you will in other biblical stories that mention feet. But then the action in this passage is clouded by the pronouns in it. <clears throat> Throughout, we only actually get he or his rather than Moses or Gershom, who is Moses' son. So who is being attacked? And who does Zipporah touch with the foreskin? And this vignette, it takes place at night. And the lack of specific details can make us feel like we're still at night, still in the dark, kind of casting about looking for the real story. Encounters with God are strange. Scholars speculate that we are missing some crucial details here. One is a simple textual anomaly. That phrase that I kept tripping over, which is bridegroom of blood, doesn't clarify anything for us, even though verses 25 to 26 seem to imply that it should clarify it for us. So it's a bit like if I used a big theology word, like a $20 theology word, like ontological, to help explain a confusing concept like the Trinity. If you know what ontological means, yeah, that might help. If you don't, I've only confused you further. Bridegroom of blood is like that. It probably clarified things for the original listeners, but we modern readers are left scratching our heads more confused than before. The second thing we're missing is all the other versions of this story. We've mentioned before that the stories of the Bible were first told orally, it's very likely, perhaps around the fire, perhaps as entertainment. Each person would give their own spin on the story. We tried to do a bit of that this morning with our readers' theater. I'd like to add some additions. So. I brought my sunglasses back so you know that I'm playing different characters. So it might go something like this. Did you hear how Zipporah saved her husband, Moses? An angel of Yahweh attacked them on their way to Egypt. No one quite knows why. And then someone might interrupt, no, we do know why. Moses didn't circumcise his son. And another person might ask, but that doesn't make any sense. Moses was the deliverer of the Israelites. How could he neglect this very important commandment? And the interrupter might say, no one knows. Some say Jethro made Moses promise his firstborn would be an idolater. Some say tradition in Midian was to wait to circumcise men until just before their wedding. Some say Moses was just forgetful. And the original storyteller might pick up, well, in any event, no matter why, we know that the night was really dark and the figure was really strong and Moses struggled and struggled, but luckily Zipporah, daughter of Jethro the priest, knew what to do. Taking her knife, she circumcised her son. If it weren't for quick thinking Zipporah, the deliverer of Israel, would have died at the hands of that angel. She is the deliverer 
of the deliverer. Zipporah is unique. Her actions are rooted in the tradition of cultic blood sacrifice, and there are no other records of women in the Near East performing such rituals. So not just in the biblical world that we hear tell of in our, our holy book, but in the area where the Bible action takes place. We don't have historical record of this, so that's really fascinating. Some speculate that the actions of the women in Exodus that we have account of, particularly those of Miriam, Moses' sister, and Zipporah, Moses' wife, they indicate a tradition of women serving in priestly and prophetic roles. Miriam, after all, is the very first person, not woman, person, period, to be called a prophet in the Bible. <laughs> Scholars speculate that this tradition was repressed over time after religious guidelines became more structured. We won't really ever know, right? Encounters with God are really strange, and this story makes that very, very clear. But Zipporah literally and figuratively cuts through all that weirdness and finds an answer, a way through. There's even this sense in the story that maybe the, the, the narrator of the story is almost saying like God God felt God's anger burned, like God couldn't help but be angry, and like Zipporah is the one who gets the, figures out the way to get around this anger, even when God didn't seem to know an answer. It, it's just a very fascinating um, moment of clarity for her. She uses what she has on hand, her knife and her knowledge as the daughter of a priest, and she finds a solution. And when she does this, she joins a long line of crafty biblical characters. Jacob, who used his knowledge of husbandry to get himself more goats. Joseph, who used his dream interpretation to get out of prison. Tamar, who tricked her father-in-law when he would not let her marry nor release her to be married to someone else. Ruth, who convinced Boaz to be her kinsman redeemer. That's where the other passage with feet is. All of these people found ways through difficult and confusing situations, and many of them were praised for it, even though some of their actions are a little su suspect sometimes. Now, Zipporah's actions are actually pretty straightforward. All the way over in Matthew 10, in Jesus' messages, Jesus says to, the, says to the disciples, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. And I think those words echo Sipporah's actions. She takes this very strange encounter with God, and she shrewdly finds a solution. So my hope for us this week is that we find strange and shrewd solutions. May we encounter God in this strange and crazy world that we live in. May we use our creative gifts to find our ways through the weird. Amen. Our hymn of response is Lead On, O Cloud of Presence, which is in Voices Together, number 194.
Good afternoon, everyone. We've come to the point in our service for the work of the church. Um, and as the Lord lifts you up, voices together, 832. My friends, go now and go with God, for you cannot go where God is not. And go in love, for love alone endures. Go with purpose, coming up with new and interesting ways to live in this weird world, seeking God in the midst of that weird. And God will honor your dedication. And go in peace. For it is the gift of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. 